Well, it's late September, and you know what that means. That's right, it's almost Halloween, and the perfect time to list our favorite spooky board games. Listen, I don't care if the holiday's still a month away. If you don't like the witch decorations in my yard, Karen, then you can complain about it to the HOA. Sorry about that, whoo, got a bit heated there. Anyway, for many of us, Halloween has always been about trick-or-treating, fun costumes, and the best parties that we never remember. But one tradition that you should absolutely start up, if you haven't already, is playing some of the best board games that the spooky genre has to offer. And how will you know which games to try? By seeing our list of the very best games the spooky genre has to offer, of course. I know, I'm just too kind. But before we do get started, we will be mentioning the main publisher here in the States behind these games. But if you do want to see what other publishers help bring this game to other countries, you can check out the links in the description down below, which will get you to BoardGameGeek.com and you can see more details on each game. Now that that's out of the way, allow me to present to you our top 10 spooky board games perfect for Halloween. Number 10, Level 7 Omega Protocol, published by Privateer Press and designed by Will Schooniver. Coming 27 years after the release of Aliens, you can clearly see its legacy resonating through this game. One player will take on the role of the Overseer, who controls the aliens and sets traps for the other players to hopefully overcome as they navigate the eerie Subterra Bravo facility. The players take on a team of elite spec ops as they fight through hordes of aliens to shut down the facility and purge it of the potentially world-ending threat. Omega Protocol creates tension and makes the players really feel like the odds are stacked against them while still giving them a chance to claim victory. The result is a heart-pounding grind of a game in which victory against the aliens really feels like a hard-fought win. Number 9, Eldritch Horror, published by Fantasy Flight Games and designed by Corey Koniska. Eldritch Horror is based on the now widely acclaimed books written by H.P. Lovecraft. While you might have heard of the original game, Arkham Horror, with the questionably new edition that's come out, we feel confident that Eldritch Horror has earned its place on this list rather than its predecessor. In Eldritch Horror, you'll travel the world, hoping to fend off the coming of one of four ancient ones, Azathoth, Shubnigaroth, Yogg-Sothoth, and of course, Cthulhu. To do this, you'll need to fight monsters, discover clues, and close otherworldly gates. You'll have your choice of a dozen investigators, all with unique skills and abilities to help them shut out the terrors from beyond our world. This game has a way of making the players feel like they are on pins and needles throughout the experience, giving it an authentic feel. If you win, you feel more relieved than victorious, as you should. Not many combat an elder god and live to tell of it. Number 8. Village Attacks published by ADC Blackfire Entertainment GmbH, Grimlord Games, and Last Level, and designed by Adam Smith. From two games inspired by classic works of fiction to one that takes a common horror trope and turns it on its head, we have the mold-breaking Village Attacks game. The players will control some of the most powerful and dangerous monsters in history as they just try to live their lives. Gosh! But no, those lame villagers from nearby have decided to rain on the monster's parade and attack them at their massive castle. So now it's up to you as the player to defend yourself and your friends from the evil, wicked, probably deserved it villagers. In all seriousness, this game is a unique spin on the survival game genre, pitting the players against hordes of humans which aren't too dangerous on their own, but with their vastly superior numbers can start causing problems if you're not careful. Number 7, Subterra, published by Inside the Box Board Games LLP, ITB, Nuts Publishing, and Schwercraft Verlog, and designed by Tim Pinder. Subterra is a game that plays with our fear of the unknown in an elegant, if not brutal, way. In this game, players will be spelunking out of their depth and now trying to escape a terrifying, undiscovered cave. Each player will have its own specialist that comes with their own abilities to help them navigate the caves, which will come in handy as everything from cave to gas leaks to unseen creatures will be out to get them. The game board is developed out around the players as they progress through the cave, only adding to the fear and desperate feelings you get as your team is fading and you still haven't even found the exit. Number 6, Last Night on Earth, published by Flying Frog Productions and Hobby Base, and designed by Jason C. Hill. 
This is the quintessential zombie survival game. No, not like you're a zombie trying to survive, though that would be a pretty cool game concept. And then there, and those are the kind of pieces. Yeah, and it's gonna look like that. Hey Cameron, then... did you finish that video yet? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 still working on it. Yeah, I'll finish it up. Right, right away, boss. As I was saying, in Last Night on Earth, one player will take control of all of the zombies, while the other players will each take one of the characters and try to stay alive while still completing whatever tasks the current scenario requires. With five scenarios and eight characters, there's a lot of replayability. This game does an excellent job of balancing hordes of zombies while still making each individual zombie a viable threat, especially at the beginning. While you certainly want to spend as much time as possible gathering resources, spend too much time lollygagging, and it might just be your last night on Earth. Number 5, Dead of Winter, a crossroads game, published by Plat Hat Games and designed by Jonathan Gilmore and Isaac Vega. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead, you'll probably enjoy this one. The players will work together to build up a community of survivors, but each one will have their own objective to complete. But all is not well in Dead of Winter, as one of the players will be a traitor. Much like the aforementioned comic book series, slash TV show, slash video game series, this game is built upon mistrust. Though there are plenty of games in the zombie survival genre, few generate the same feelings of foreboding and mistrust among friends. So basically you get to feel what it's like playing games with the other boys and girls here at Conquering Boredom HQ. Number 4, Alone, published by Horrible Games and designed by Andrea Crespi and Lorenzo Silva. In both Level 7 Omega Protocol and Last Night on Earth, one player controlling the enemies and threats is pitted against the rest of the players who each have their own character to play. In Alone, this format is flipped around entirely. One player will take charge of the lone hero in this game as they look to discover the truth of where they are and save their friends. The other player, or players, will control the world around them, doing whatever they can to keep the hero from completing their objectives. But as if that wasn't bad enough, they will also only be able to see the sector they are currently in. At the end of each of their rounds, every board other than the one that contains the hero will be removed from the table. The hero player will have to remember where they have been. The evil players, on the other hand, can see the entire map at all times, hidden away behind a screen. Alone does a splendid job of fully immersing the hero player into an environment where it is literally them against the world. Number 3, King of Tokyo Halloween, published by Yellow and designed by Richard Garfield. In a list chock full of rather serious games with plenty of scary or brilliant story motifs, this game is like a bag of Skittles and a bucket full of candy bars. It's just as good as any candy bar, but it's not as dense or rich and doesn't ask as much of the consumer. You know, sometimes I don't want some crummy chocolate stuffed with preservatives and a bunch of other nonsense. Sometimes I just want some yummy, artificially flavored fruit candy. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, okay, I feel better getting that off my chest. Candy related tirades aside, this game plays just like the original, but now with Halloween themed kaiju. The game itself plays off a simple rolling and keeping system, wherein you try to score points, deal damage, heal up, or gain energy through matching the dice up. It's fun, it's easy to learn, and it's one of the few games on this list where the players all compete against each other, rather than one fighting against the rest or full on co-op. Number 2, Fury of Dracula, published by WizKids and designed by Frank Brooks, Stephen Hand, and Kevin Wilson. So I feel like the inspiration behind this one might be a bit obvious. That's right, this one is all about that spooky man who lives in a castle in Transylvania. But don't worry, you won't be confined to exploring just central Romania. But honestly, what could you have to complain about? Romania is a beautiful country full of beautiful people, except that Dracula fellow. He's a creepazoid. Speaking of the King of Amps, in this game, most of the players will be hunters, tracking down old Vladdy, who will be controlled by the other player. Dracula will be looking to increase his influence while throwing the hunters off his trail. Those hunters will be trying to defeat the Count, tracking down clues which will hint at his recent locations as Dracula is running all over Europe. Fury of Dracula recreates the feeling of constantly playing from behind as you seek after the Vampire Lord. 
Not that I would know anything about that. <laughs> Side note, if you happen to have any information about Dracula's whereabouts, just leave a comment below. Not because I'm hunting him, of course, I'm, I'm just curious. And number one, Zombicide, published by Command Limited and designed by Raphael Guiton, Nicolas Raoult, and Jean-Baptiste Lulien. Just a general apology to all of France for how I just read those names. Anyway, if you've been on our channel for long, you'll know already that we have a great deal of love for this game. A prolific series already, despite the original game coming out as recently as 2012, Zombicide allows you to fight zombies in a number of unique settings, such as medieval fantasy, pirates, sci-fi, and more. The game offers dozens of hero options, game scenarios, and unique villain types, allowing more replayability than any other game on this list. The game style is fast and uncomplicated, though you wouldn't know that if you ever watched us spend 10 minutes planning out a single turn. However, let too many zombies spawn in, and a fun, zombie bashing time can quickly turn into a crisis, potentially resulting in more than one death from the player characters. In our mind, our single collective hive mind, there's not a better game you could ask to play for Halloween. So did any of those games strike your fancy? You can check them out in the description for the links on how to buy them. Hello! I just wanted to let you know that a lot of the links are affiliate links, which just means that if you click on them and go purchase something, we'll get a small percentage of the sale. Now, it doesn't cost you anything extra, it just really helps us to produce more content like this for you guys. I was going! That could have been the perfect take right there, all the way through. But it wasn't! It was. Grames. <laughs> Did we miss any of your favorites? Let us know about them in the comments down below. Also, we've played a few of these already, but if there are any others in this list or elsewhere that you'd like to see us play, give us a shout so we know what you guys want to see out of this channel. If you enjoyed this and want to see other lists, give this video a like and we'll keep making them. Finally, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Cameron, your resident favorite Hufflepuff. From Conquering Boredom, and good luck conquering.